Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover what fractions are. We will go through some examples together, and then we will end with some practice problems. Now simply put, a fraction represents part of a whole. Let's jump into some examples here to help us understand what this means. And we're going to start with this whole pizza right here. So we have one whole pizza. If we had two whole pizzas, we'd write two. If we had three pizzas, we'd write three. So on and so forth. The point being, we use whole numbers to represent wholes. So nothing new here. But what if we only have part of a whole? For example, let's look at this part of a whole pizza right here. Do we have a whole pizza? No, so we need to use a fraction to represent this amount. Let's say that this amount is what was eaten and this is what is left. So basically, what part of the whole pizza do we have left? Let's write a fraction so we need to use numbers to represent what is left. Now when writing fractions, we have a top number, a fraction bar, and then a bottom number. So fractions have two numbers. Again, one on top and one on the bottom. And then they are separated by a fraction bar. Let's start with the bottom number. That's going to be how many total equal parts the whole has been divided into. So as far as this pizza, how many parts make up the whole pizza? Well, one, two. So two is our bottom number. We need our fraction bar to separate the top and bottom number, and now we need the top number. The top number is going to be how many of the equal parts we have out of the whole. So in this case, we are looking at and want the part of the pizza that is left. Well, we have one part left. So one is our top number, and that's our fraction, one over two. And we say this fraction, one half. So we have one half of the pizza left. This fraction represents this amount. We have one part left out of the two total parts. Now before we move on to more examples, I do want to cover what the top number of a fraction is called and what the bottom number of a fraction is called. We call the top number of a fraction the numerator. The bottom number of a fraction is called the denominator. Think denominator down. Match those Ds and that can help us remember that one. Let's move on to some more examples. So here are some more examples and we will go through six in total. Two more with pizzas and then we will go from there. For numbers one and two here, let's write fractions to represent how much pizza is left. So let's look at number one first. We will start with how many total equal parts the whole has been divided into. The whole has been divided into one, two, three, four equal parts. So that's our denominator, the bottom number of the fraction. Then we need the fraction bar, and now we need the numerator, the top number. The numerator is going to be how many equal parts of the whole pizza we have left. Well, it looks like we have one, two, three, four parts left. So that's our numerator. So our fraction here to represent the amount of pizza left is four over four, which we would say four fourths. Now you may be thinking, we have a whole pizza here, one whole pizza, and you're right. So why would we write a fraction? Well, we have four out of four pieces left. So we were able to write that fraction four over four. That fraction actually equals one whole. So something to keep in mind when it comes to fractions, when we have the same number on top and the bottom, that's equal to one whole. And this picture of the pizza is a good visual of that. Let's move on to number two, and we can tell right away that we do not have the whole pizza left. So let's write a fraction to represent this amount. 
Let's start with how many equal parts the whole pizza was divided into. That's going to be our denominator. We have one, two, three, four equal parts. So that's our denominator. Now we need the numerator. So how many equal parts of the pizza do we have left? How many pieces of the pizza do we have left? Well, one, two, three. So that's our numerator. And we're done, that's our fraction. Three over four. And we would say this three fourths. That fraction tells us that we have three pieces of pizza left out of the four total pieces. So three out of four parts. Let's move on to some more examples. Taking a look at numbers three through six, we're going to write fractions to represent the shaded part of each shape. So the colored in part. And you'll notice that none of these shapes are completely colored in. So we don't have any holes here. We have parts of holes. So we need to write fractions to represent that. Let's start by taking a look at number three. So how many total equal parts has the whole, the whole circle, been divided into? Well, one, two, three. So that's our denominator. And you'll notice I'm saying equal parts throughout this video. When it comes to fractions, we need to be working with equal parts. So parts that are the same size. So something to keep in mind when it comes to fractions. Now we need our numerator. So how many parts are shaded? Well, one, two. So that's the top number of this fraction. So we get two over three, which we would say two thirds. That fraction tells us that two out of the three parts are shaded. We have part of the whole circle shaded. Let's move on to number four, and we'll start with how many equal parts the whole has been divided into. Well, one, two, three, four. So that's our denominator. Now we need how many equal parts have been shaded. One, so that's our numerator. So our fraction here, one over four, which we would say one fourth one out of four parts are shaded. Moving on to number five, let's start with how many total equal parts the whole rectangle has been divided into. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's our denominator. Now we need how many equal parts have been shaded. One, two, three, four. So that's our numerator. We get four over six, which we would say four sixths. Four out of six parts are shaded. Lastly, let's take a look at number six. How many equal parts has this hole been divided into? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is our denominator. Now we need how many equal parts have been shaded. One, two, three, four, five. So that's our numerator. And we get five over eight. We would say this, five eighths. Five out of eight parts are shaded. So now that we've gone through some examples together, it's time for you to try some practice problems on your own. So have paper and a pencil ready. Here are your practice problems. For numbers one and two, what fraction of each pizza is left? For numbers three and four, what fraction of each shape is shaded? So write a fraction for each of these. I'll give you two minutes and then we will go over the answers. Go ahead and start.
Okay, so that's two minutes. Let's take a look at the answers. For number one, there's one eighth of the pizza left. For number two, there's five sixths of the pizza left. For number three, two fifths of the shape is shaded. And lastly, for number four, four ninths of the shape is shaded. So there you have it. There's what a fraction is. A fraction represents part of a whole. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.